Revelation is, is, is an illustration of the doctrines of God. It's, it's a vivid illustration. In fact, there are, in these 404 verses, there are hundreds of allusions to every other point in the Bible because it's illustrating all of these doctrines. So what we see in this, in the horsemen of the apocalypse is each of these four seals uh, that, are, that are listed, the four horsemen as the seals are broken in verses 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, etc., each are illustrating something of what the consequences are to choices that humans have made. So let, let me just give you one. The first seal is the white horse. Now think about what humanity has done. When the one who alone is the way and truth in life is abandoned, this white horse is kind of the, the global seduction of humanity by the false Christ. And, and this human that's empowered by the devil begins to assemble the first empire that encompasses the whole world. Now, the Romans did, you know, the, the British did so much, and the Romans did so much, and, you know, Genghis Khan did so much, but nobody ever had the whole thing. Nobody's ever conquered at all until the end. And this man, energized by the devil, does. And, and it's only because the one who alone is the way in truth and life has been abandoned, and all that's left are the lies of deception. When you abandon the truth, there's nothing left but deception and lies and falsehood. So if you turn away from the true God, the false one will find you. See, that's the danger. The danger of abandoning truth is you find the liar from the beginning. He's waiting for the truth abandoners who don't love the truth. And that's what God allows in the first seal. Basically, the first seal is God giving everybody what they always wanted. They always wanted a world without God. You don't want God. He's just too rigid, too, you know, he's got all these rules and they're not good. And we want to live life our own way. God says, okay, you can live life your own way. Now, remember, in your minds, about two months ago, we were in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I told you then it was an important piece to remember that it says that God pulls the control rods out of the earth. It's the restrainer. It is, and we talked about it, it's the Holy Spirit in his church. And it's not the Holy Spirit leaves, it's the church leaves, and the Spirit's restraint is the rods are pulled back. And just like in a reactor, if you pull out those, those graphite absorbers of neutron rods and you pull them back, the reaction picks up and it gets bigger and stronger and pretty soon it melts down and ruins everything. You know, we, we have a, you know, a three-mile island or a, you know, what happened over in Belarus. You just have this Chernobyl event. Well, the whole earth, when God pulls his restraint back, has a Chernobyl spiritual event. Secondly, look what happens. In the, the red horse, in verses 3 and 4, is the, the result, the consequence of when the one who came as the prince of peace, the one who came to give abundant life, is rejected. All you have left is the other one, the God of this world. He came to kill and steal and destroy. And you know what the earth will become like? It'll become like video games where it's just constant carnage and death and destruction and horrors. Only you won't be able to keep it on the screen. It's the whole world. And that's what this red horse is. It's what God allows with his second seal. Basically, humans murder and warfare covers the globe and death from fighting is that red horse. And then the Lord says, you, you don't want the one who came to be the bread of life and you reject him? Okay. When he comes, he says, I'll abundantly satisfy I will, I will make you so you never hunger. So you don't want to be spiritually satisfied? I'll show you what it's like without the bread of life. Uh, without the spirit of life, without the, the influence of God. When I withdraw the restrainer, look what happens. Without God's restraint, mankind spirals into nonstop upheaval, unrest, warfare, uh, and that disrupts the, the global food supply chain. And, and it just becomes just a little foretaste of hell and God allows widespread starvation. And the last one, when the one who came to be the resurrection of life is rejected, the only other option is death. And that takes the body and the grave or Hades, and that takes the soul. When Christ is rejected, when his spirit is restrained, when the Father is unwanted, all across the world will be warfare, famine, that's the second and third seals, plus pestilence and plague. Did you know right now in America there are 20 million people who through promiscuity, through immorality, have contracted sexually transmitted diseases and they're incurable? 
And that's with the control rods in, with the church and the word and the gospel and the spirit of God just deeply convicting the world. When God pulls back the restraint, you know what it says in chapter 9 of Revelation? It says, even when they're dying of thirst and scorched by the sun and demons are terrorizing them, they will not repent of their thefts, their murders, their drug usage, and their fornication. I wouldn't think you would have time to do all that stuff if you're running for your life from a demon monster, but they are so consumed, so habituated by sin that they just self-destruct. Well, basically, the Bible's talking about the horrible consequences of sin. What happens on earth that kills one-fourth of humanity in the first 11 verses of chapter 6? The wrath of God hasn't launched yet. That's in verse 12. What is it that, that causes this, this horrific carnage? It's the consequences of sin. The horrors that mankind heaps upon himself in those first four seals are just a reminder of the laws that God has built into the universe. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a person sows, they'll harvest. This is the doctrine of the wrath of God. Cataclysmic, hell, future wrath, yes. Consequential, today, incrementally. There's a consequence for every sin.